Hello. In this video, I'll show you how to load up a data set and use it. So I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to create a new Google Colab file. I'll call it load up data. So this time I'm going to use two import statements to import two sets of tools. So pandas is a set of tools that will allow me to import .csv files. So .csv files, those are comma separated value files. If you open them up in a text editor, they would look like rows of numbers and each number on the row is separated by commas. So that's a format that is used for pretty much any spreadsheet program will read .csv files like Excel or Google Sheets. And here we're gonna use that format uh, to load into Python. It's just a convenient format for computers to use. So we're gonna load in those tools as PD. So anytime I wanna call those tools, I'll call the tool as PD dot, and then whatever the name of the tool is. This is just my comment for humans to see what that line of code does. And here's a comment for humans that says this next line loads up the plotting tools in matplotlib and I'll load them in as PLT. So if I wanna use one of those plotting tools, I'll do PLT dot the name of the plotting tool. All right, so let me go ahead and run that line of code. So I'll have my tools imported. And meanwhile, I'm going to go and get my data set. So I have, I'm gonna um, use this data set of COVID data. So I wanna download it as a .csv file. So I'm gonna, instead of doing, uh, instead of right clicking and downloading, which will download it as an Excel file, I don't want that. So I'm gonna double click on it and do file and download. And here it'll let me have a choice and I can choose to download as a comma separated va value file, a CSV file. Okay, so now it's downloading for it for me. I'll go back to my Google Colab document and click on that little folder icon and then click on that file upload icon. Find Navigate to find my data set. There it is and open it. And here it's just warning me that it's not gonna save my data files. I have to save them on my computer or somewhere else. Okay, now it somehow downloaded with a weird name. So I'm gonna use those three dots to rename my file, but something a little bit more normal, get rid of all this double naming, get rid of all these extra, let's see, dot .csvs. Okay, that looks a little bit better. All right, and now I'm ready to import it using pandas. So I'm gonna make a new little code box and I'm gonna say PD and I'll use the import command read underscore CSV. And now I need to give that read CSV command the name of the file and I put the name of the file in quotes. So I can copy it very carefully because it has zero tolerance for any typos when I'm copying. And if I'm worried about my typing, another way to get the name right is to go over here and do rename again and uh, copy that. I just did um, select all and then copy with keyboard shortcuts. And then I could go ahead and paste that um, there. Because the thing is, if you have even one letter off, like if I forgot the C or something, then when I played that, it would say file not found. So I have to get the file name exactly. I think this should work better. Okay, good. So I read it in, but uh, I forgot to actually give a name to the data set where I read it in. I mean, the file had a name, but I wanna actually give a name or handle to that data set so I can call it up and work with it easily. So I'm just gonna call it, I'm gonna change this code and say my data equals. And that way when it reads it in, instead of just spitting it out on the screen, it'll put it into that my data variable. So see now when I run it, it looks like it didn't do anything, but it put it into my data variable so that I have a name for it so I can have a handle to work with it. If I wanna see what's in there, I can now type my data or I could type print my data, something like that. Either way, it prints out the contents of that my data variable, or at least part of them. It doesn't print out the whole data set since it's 80 rows long. So let's just look what's in here. There's a 
the far left is just the row numbers. Notice that Python always starts counting with zero. So what we might think of as the first row, and it's day one, they call it, Python calls it row zero. And what we might call the 80th row, day 80, it calls row 79. Then the next column is the date, and then the days, and then the number of cases, cumulative cases. Notice that those headings are just the same as they were in our Google Sheets or .csv file version of this data set. All right, so maybe sometimes I just wanna work with one piece of the data, not the whole data set at once. So for example, if I just wanted to look at the cases, I could call just the cases by my data cases like that. And now if I just run that or I could do a print statement like this, it'll just be looking at the cases column. And if I just wanted to look at the date column, for example, or the days column, I'll do the days column, that would be just the days column. Okay, so that gives me just one column. Now, it also might be that I don't really wanna work with all of the rows at once. Maybe I just wanna do like row, say row, like say day 70 through day 80, for example. Okay, so, but I wanna look at all the columns. So then I could do my data. I wanna do all the columns. I mean, sorry, all the rows, but just day 70 through through 80. So notice that day 70 is what Python thinks of as going to be row 69, right? Because like day 77 was row 76. So I'm going to use a square bracket. And if I want day 70, I'll put a little comment over here to remind me what we're doing. Um, just day 70 through 80. Okay, then I'm going to actually be calling Python's, what Python calls row 69 as my first row. And then I'm gonna go all the way up through the end. Uh, Python thinks the last row is row 79, but to get all the way through 79, I have to go one past it and call it 80. So this will print out just day 70 through 80. So there are a couple of things that are a little confusing there. First of all, the fact that Python starts counting at zero. So that means that to get what I think of as row 70 or day 70, I have to call that row 69 for Python. And the second thing is that number here is just one more than the last row that Python thinks it's, is calls it. So it's just 80 is one after that last row, which Python thinks is row 79. Okay. In practice, you can also think of this as if I want <laughs> day 70 through 80, I start at 69 and end at 80. I start one below and end at that one. All right, so that printed out those days, um, those, row, those rows for day 70 through 80. And if I just wanted, for example, the cases or the cases for those, those days, I could do my data cases and again, 69 through 80. Okay, so now let's say we want to print out, we want to plot this data. So for that, I can use the plotting tools, PLT, and I'm going to do a scatter plot. And I have to tell it what to plot on the x-axis and what to plot on the y-axis. So I'm going to plot the days on the x-axis. I have to call that with my data, name of the data set, and then days, the name of the column. On the y-axis, I'm going to put cases, name of the data set, my data, and then cases, which is the name of the column. So let's go ahead and plot that. There we go. And if, for example, I only wanted to do days, what was I doing before, 70 through 80, or this time, this time let's do days 60 through 80, then instead of plotting all the days, I'm gonna start from 59 through the end, row 59 through the end. So that'll get me days 60 through 80, 59 through the end. And here we go. And as I did before, I can make it look a little nicer by putting a title, say US uh, COVID. And I could give it, label my x-axis. These are days since 12, 31, 2019. And my Y label, cumulative incidents. I 
think I'm accidentally put curly braces when I meant regular parentheses. So let me fix that. And I'm going to do show to put it all together. And here's my plot. Thanks for watching. <laughs>